yield in the 10 year Treasury note, which is down fractionally. One unexpected drop in new home sales last month. Sales of new homes falling 3.6% on an annualized basis. This is many economists expected again. Sales of new homes seem to be headed in a different direction than sales of previously owned homes. Why is that? Greg Rand from Better Homes and Gardens. Rand Realty, big New York City area real estate brokerage, joins us now. Greg, welcome. Thank you. Um, big divergence here. And yeah. you look at existing homes, they're a little bit cheaper than a new home. And you factor in that existing, you know, first time home buyer tax credit. Why are we seeing these things diverge and how much of the sales that we have done have to do with that tax credit? Okay, well, we're, we're looking backwards again. Okay. It's, if you, it's all if we can do. Back, it's, hard, it's hard to. Well, I'm going to show you the crystal ball in a few minutes. Okay. But the, the new home sales, if you look at the housing starts from January, February, March, and April, housing starts were way down. It takes about four to five months to build a house. This should not have been surprising to any economists to see that new home sales, which are the closings of those same new homes that they put the shovel in the ground four and five months ago, totally predictable. But it is only still, you know, what, eight or nine percent of the total housing market is new homes. What we're seeing in the overall market right now is that very simply because prices are coming down, sales are increasing, the market is a lot healthier than people are actually giving it credit for. You know, we talked about the housing, uh, the, the $8,000 tax credit. Tax credit has helped. It has not created home buyers, okay? In the places on the coasts where most of the volatility in the housing market has come from, that's, I mean, my marketplace, average sale price is $400,000, okay? So they, so they go to, because I would argue the opposite in the middle of the, the country. True. 70% of all, and this is coming from the NAR, 70% of all homes sold recently have been under $250,000. The median price, one seventy-five. dollars The eight grand, mat, if you're buying a $200,000 home, that eight grand can give you the amount Big of enough, money yeah, you need for an FHA. Payment. You don't have to put any of your own money in. The FHA and the government are happy to provide that. You know what, the here middle you part say of the country, it doesn't matter. Well, it definitely doesn't matter out here. Well, it, I shouldn't say it doesn't matter. It matters a little, but it's it, not it, going to be creates, the swing. It's not creating home buyers. It's creating urgency for existing home buyers. Okay? But the, the key thing here is that the housing market moves somewhat slowly. You know, yesterday Case Shiller came out. Case Shiller's August numbers reflect transactions that got negotiated in May and June. All right? So we're talking yeah. about five months in retrospect. So I've got the crystal ball. Everyone says they don't have a crystal ball. I do. It's called the real estate brokerage. The deals that we're doing right now are going to be closing basically in January and February. So, for example, the fourth quarter. You want to know what's going to happen when the January and February reports come out that reflect the fourth quarter? Crystal ball. I can tell you right now. It's in the can already. We're going to have the biggest increase in home sales year over year in five years. Okay, so the fourth quarter number is going to come out gangbusters because the sales from the last Maybe three, for you guys, and that's good news. I'm, telling, I think I'm, I'm, hearing, I'm, I'm hearing differently from realtors in other parts of the country. Well, I, you know, some, so we'll look back in four months and see who was right. But I'm telling you that the friends that I talk to around the country are busy right now. You know, we showed, we've shown over 100,000 homes this year so far. We've only sold 2,500. All right? I've been saying on this channel all year long, there's no housing melt. Two and a half percent conversion rate. Hold yeah. on for a second. Yeah. We're going to come right back to you. I want, I want to hit some news on CIT. We were just talking about CIT, yeah. the biggest small business lender, which is in negotiation with bondholders. A lot of concern about a possible bankruptcy for CIT. They're getting an extra $4.5 billion credit facility. They had $3 billion already out there. Not from the government, folks. This is from existing bondholders offering up another $4.5 billion through a tranche, basically a level of debt that is going to come to maturity in three years, in 2012. So adding about $4.5 billion in credit. So in other words, CIT Group, just like overdraft, if you will, on a checking account, right? You write checks you can't cash. If you have overdraft, it'll cover it. Think of this kind of as a... Overdraft protection for CIT, adding another $4.5 billion. Still, CIT by no means out of the woods. All right, sorry about that, Greg. It's no problem. news. CIT is a huge company. No doubt. <laughs> Got to get that news in there. Uh, so you believe that in the, if we met in January that we're going to see a totally, maybe not totally see, different, but a, a better real estate The fourth estate quarter closings are already done, okay? They're, they're in contract right now, okay? And what I'm getting from my friends around the country and I'm seeing in my company is that the, the sales that we did in the last couple of months were much stronger than last year. I can tell you the reports that come out at the end of me, the early part of the spring, which are going to reflect first quarter closings, which reflect fourth quarter sales activity, are going to be maybe the biggest increase in sales in 20 years. And it, that's because largely the prices have come down. All right. These things on the margins, like an increase in foreclosure activity, it's on the margins. The $8,000 tax credit on the margins. That is not the reason why the market is recovering right now. It's purely on price. Rates being low, also good, okay? But if rates were six and a half, this market would still be recovering. All right, this is a cycle. 
And it's a fairly easy cycle to predict when you basically just watch prices go up, they go up too high, sales go down. When sales freeze up for long enough, the sellers finally capitulate. Are you which saying is supply now. demand action? And yeah, it's like crazy little. Eco 101 actually <laughs> works in the real estate market. It absolutely too. works. Yeah. So you're going to see it. We'll be back here in April. Case Shiller will come out and they'll proclaim that it was the biggest sales quarter of, of all time um, in terms of an increase. They're going to forget to mention that the fourth quarter sales last year, 08, was the middle of the Great Depression. It's surprising anybody bought a house in the fourth quarter of last year. All right, so when you compare first quarter closings in okay. 2010 with Well, we're going to hold closings, you to it. We'll get you back on. We'll, we'll see. I hope the numbers reflect that. Yeah. They will. You know, let's hope. Greg Rand, thank you very much. That's Promises. Cool. Ooh, I like <laughs> yeah. it. There you go. Thank you. All right, all right. Most politicians in cash-strapped states are all for casino gambling, but not Ohio.